And we're live. Hey, everyone. It's Lev from Trotec Laser Canada. Welcome to everyone watching around the country and around the world. Uh, we have our all-star panel, the usual suspects, uh, Mike Clark, Mal Jacinto, James, and Stephen. Uh, and please welcome our very special guest, uh, Vivian from Laser Babes. And uh, is it Ozizo? Yes, Ozizo. Oh, perfect. From Holland. Um, or from the Netherlands, sorry, what, what part of the Netherlands are you Are you in? We're in the middle, right in, in the, the middle. middle. <laughs> if you just take a cross and then point in the middle, then you'll be in my city. Which, which city is that, if, if you don't mind sharing? It's sorry? called Bussum, but it's small. It's okay. not, yeah. It's a, it's a village, actually, but it for me, it feels like a city because it's it's small, but still, it has all the shops and everything. Wow. Well, welcome, welcome. And you've been, uh, I, I guess you've been watching us for, for quite some time. Uh, we always see comments uh, and questions from, from you on, on Facebook. Uh, you've been the, you've been since the beginning, I think, right? Um, I've seen some. So I have, I miss it always because as it is Friday afternoon, uh, late afternoon for us. So, and mostly there's other things to do, but then I, go back to youtube but very nice that you're having me here thank you very much for that i really enjoy uh, watching it so no thank you so much for for being here yeah mike I, I just muted you i'm just getting a little bit of echo if you want to put in your your earbuds thanks mike mm -hmm. um yeah so if you guys are customers from around the world uh trota customers you want to be part of our community ask questions uh we'd love to have you on on the discussion panel we'll talk about your business like we're going to talk about uh, vivian's business uh, ask her some questions um and and yeah get this going if you guys are in the chat uh, just let us know where you're from uh send us a quick message we'd love to to pop that up as well hey stefan how's everyone uh, perfect. So, Vivian, if you can, I mean, why don't you tell us how you got started, basically, with with your business? And I'm going to open up uh, your your Instagram and let us know why you have two businesses. Sort of what streams that you sell. I will. I will. Um, okay. Um, this is Laser Babes. This is a company that I have with a friend, um, the dark girl. That's Ellen. Ellen Lamont. She has uh, her company is Studio Stemple, which means Studio Stamp. And she is all into stamps, uh, making rubber stamps, uh, etc. And my company was is Ozizo, and I sell mainly jewelry, jewelry tags, and uh, leather um, uh, tags for uh, people that crochet or knit or sew, and they want their own brand name on. Uh, yeah, those are the leather, uh, the metal tags. Um, when I took over for Ellen for a while, uh, she was before that she was making uh, polymer stamps, and that was a lot of work and a lot of handwork at home. You know, like it's going to be covered. But if you want some money, but I think sorry, I just muted Stephen. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, so. Um, she did that and then i took over for her because she had an illness in the family so i had to take over for a while and because we're very good friends i did that and but then i found it way too difficult to make all the polymer stamps etc so i started researching and i thought oh lasering stamps that would be good so i kind of switched her company over and asked her if she was okay. And she said, well, yes, if it's good, it's okay with me for now. And then she was very, very happy. But we do uh, exchange ideas all the time. Um, so we uh, also developed some um, paper tape with all uh, prints on it and everything. Um, and then seven years ago, we went to Frankfurt, the creative, Met, uh, creative fair over there and they had all these lasers there and we were in love and that was seven years ago and every year when we went to a fair or every anything yeah we said okay we need to get one we need to get one but of course the price is a lot and yeah we're both a little bit hesitant but we both had other companies making our stuff for us so um, we now said, uh, okay, if the, they're making our stuff, maybe we should see if we buy one, if we would 
could like uh, save some money. And as her business with the stamps is really booming, um, she could already do it. And for me, it was a little bit more difficult because my business is not so going, not so really big. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, we found that these past eight months, we've every month we made the dump the payment for the month and saved money. So that was good. Now we don't have to like exchange it or send it to other companies. So you're but, you're you're leasing the machine right now? Like no, we we bought it, but with a loan. Oh, so, I see. I yeah. see. Perfect. Um, and then what what uh, what machine do you have? Which ProTech? Is it Speedy One Hundred? Speedy 100. Speedy 100. What uh, bulb? Or how do you say that? Um, but the thing is, um, the metal tags that I make, you, you showed them before, um, those uh, I don't make in house because that's too much work. And I have a great company. Yeah, the little Susie's one on top, or yeah. Um, so the way, or the health one. Yeah, that one. These I get made at a company that has a, uh, I think they have a flex laser. They also have a Trotec. They're also in the Netherlands. Oh, um, so you you so you outsource these metal uh, yeah. to another Trotec uh, machine yeah. user that has a flex, and oh, are, are, or maybe uh, I don't know. And that you're I'm, familiar with uh, with the spray? Uh, you just it's too much work in this case. No, I, I yesterday I made something with the spray. It's a lot of it's really nice and it works really well. But these tags are uh, like maybe half a half an inch, so they're really small. And people order them by hundred, and I put them in a in a jig, and I made the jig and everything, and I tried it, and it worked, but it's a lot of work, and I kind of don't like that work because I made these with another uh, method. I made like maybe eighty thousand in my life already, and I said, okay, this is enough. <laughs> I don't want this. So this this is what I outsource. But a, a project also, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. So Vivian, is there any uh, like a specific product that uh, you wanted to create that uh, gave you that business idea, or did it start with uh, okay, I've seen like multiple products, I want to do all of this, or is there one product that actually triggered your interest to create this business idea? Um, well, it's more our both our love for machines that made this happen because we are machine addicts and we really really like it i have like maybe five printers here and i had a metal printer i have a sublimation printer and i have all these different printers and things in my shop and i really like that um and my friend has the same but she also has a machine fear she loves them but she has a fear i don't have the fear so that's lucky but she has the fear too so and well together we work it out really nicely and that's really good and what you said what uh, item as she makes the stamps from rubber that was one item that we knew was already okay and as i make the leatherette uh, tags for my company that was for my company, but we had so many ideas that we wanted to combine them, uh, but it didn't fit in either of our businesses. So we wanted a new business because mine is really, my business is really personalizing stuff, but also like for com for small companies that want like a hundred tags or a hundred stickers or a hundred bags or like small items, the small uh, quantities and hers is the stamps and we didn't have any like platform for all our designs because we like we well i was gonna grab something and then it fell apart <laughs> for instance, we made this this small vase i don't know if you can see it oh one sec let me uh just yeah go ahead oh yeah very so cool it's like a little uh amsterdam house it has a uh glass tube in it and then you can put a like a small uh, flower in it and things like this is what we liked and it doesn't didn't fit in either of our uh, stores so um also like this one i don't have the vase in it but you can see it's a super yuffie and yuffie means teacher so it's super <laughs> it looks like balsa wood sorry 
Balsa. What what type of wood no, is that? No, it's plywood. Okay. It's plywood okay. and plywood. poplar plywood. Yeah. This one is really thin. This is a three mil, but we upgraded it and we, we're doing it five mil right now, but I don't have a sample because I sold them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good problem to have. Yes. Yeah. Well, at the end of the year, everyone's saying goodbye to their teachers. And so all the teachers are getting them small days. So over the over the years, like how how big have you built this? Like uh, you started like seven years ago, I think you said. No, seven years ago is when we discovered the, the laser, and we bought it nine months ago. Oh, oh I see. Wow. So we wow. started. We're really beginners. We had no clue what to do. We didn't even know where the button was to, to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't find it, and when the man was gone, and he installed it, and it's like, okay, now we're gonna try it. Okay. Where's the switch? <laughs> <laughs> and how, how did you find the, the learning curve uh, on, on this? Like this. It's after, well, I'm really, I want to try every material. I want to put everything in. And I ask a lot of people, can I put this in? Can I put this in? <laughs> in my Facebook groups that really are good helping you. Um, and uh, I, I really like that. So I try and yeah. That's the, the funny thing with our company when we started this. We bought the machine like September 15th or 14th or something. And then the Trotec company, the people, they said, oh, you have to enter the, the award, uh, the design award. You have oh, to enter that's right. Yeah. Yeah, cool. We, do that. Yeah. we said, well, we don't even know what is turn on switches so how are we going to do that? <laughs> then it kind of got to me and i kind of looked at the the entrances uh, of last year or yeah the year before and i saw things that i thought oh i could even be like that it's not that i thought this is way out of my league i thought i could do that so then we uh, kind of put our effort in and uh, we looked at, I don't know how many uh, tutorials, Trotec tutorials, especially the one with the 3D uh, engraving. Oh, right. Really good one because I really wanted to use that in the, in the design. So, and yeah. If well, I have a, like, I, I have a, a bunch of customers who, who are, who, well, maybe they're going to become customers, but are, are looking and, and there is sort of the same state that, that you were in. They, they had, they, you know, they've, they've been making the crafts by hand um, and looking into getting into a, a laser. Now you're nine months into it. So you're kind of their future. What would you say yeah. to them um, to, you know, to tell them, you know, what, what your experience what, was what going through it? Yeah. Well, um, I'm really a cautious person. Mm -hmm. So I would say, see how much it would cost you per month. And then figure out if you could, like, um, if you could pay that, even though you wouldn't sell anything. Because it's not so much per month. Even if you lease it, it's not so much. And especially when you were two people with us, we said, okay, that's half for one company, half for another company. That's even better. Mm -hmm. Then we up until now we've like even made some profit already, and still being able to uh, pay the monthly payment, and that was really nice. That's really really good. Sorry, uh, we have uh, Sergio asking. Uh, by the way, guys in the chat, if you want to ask uh, Vivian some questions, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, design awards. Now, uh, Vivian, just double checking. You're talking about those uh, thirty years of. Um, of Trotec Awards, right? That uh, that was um, done. This, this was a, the Dutch and Belgium. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Oh, this was a like a Trotec. Uh, yeah, Dutch. it's a Trotec Award, but it's right. only for the Netherlands and for uh, Belgium. Because yes, we're... sorry, Sergio. I think Sergio is in Portugal, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this was uh, something that was Trotec uh, Benelux, so Belgium, Netherlands, yeah, and, and Luxembourg that they did. Uh, so this this wasn't uh, for <laughs> for any of us, but that's that's pretty cool. But yeah, they they had a global uh, design awards for. Yeah. If you, if you uh, scroll scroll down in my uh, Insta, you will see um, almost at the bottom because it's one of the first things we made. Um, is it Ozio or uh, no, no, it's Laser Babes. Yeah, Laser Babes is like the real Laser Babe or the laser company, and Ozio is always more the 
yeah, yeah, you could you just pass it. Mm. Oh. Live it up. Yeah, you see we won. Oh, didn't we put a oh we didn't put the design on it, or did we? <laughs> you just won. you put what you, that you've won, but <laughs> yeah, we've won. Okay, that's nice. Um okay. Um I have it here somewhere. I can show you. So wh where did you come up with the name Laser Babes, by the way? <laughs> that was really funny because we were trying to find a name and then all of a sudden someone said, you're Laser Lady. So I said, well, that's taking yourself way too serious. <laughs> and then, then we said, okay. And then someone said, oh, uh, Ellen said, okay, we can do Laser Babes. I said, okay, that's not taking yourself so serious. I mean, we're both in our 50s. We're moms of many children and <laughs> so we said okay this is good now our people are going to say okay they're going to expect laser babes <laughs> yes, they'll never forget us and that's true because everyone yeah. even when they go to the post office the man says oh that's one of the laser babes everyone remembers the name that's really, really cool. uh, uh, that's sounds cool. more fun sounds more fun for sure. yeah, we, oh, yeah we have a question from uh diego does trotec uh have a machine that would be a good startup with or are they mainly for people already that have an experience or own a business so that's a it's a really good question um i, I guess Vivian, you, you can answer this question because i mean you bought yeah speedy 100 uh, yeah. did you have an existing business already that you mentioned you have a bunch of printers and you bought it as an addition, but can you also say that, you know, let's say, if, first of all, did you have that kind of business? And if you didn't, would you start with uh, a laser from scratch? We didn't have a laser business. We I outsourced the metal tags and I found someone, uh, also a Trotec user that made my uh, leatherette tags and my leather tags. And that was it i mean we we didn't have a laser business uh that was i knew that i could have like a couple hundred dollars uh input uh like selling that every month for the leather tags so i thought okay if i upgrade that a little bit then i can pay my thing i don't earn anything but i can at least pay the machine and then that's why we started the other company because we wanted all these other things yeah to to and we wanted to make all these other things. And so that's that's why we decided we could do it. But I think Speedy 100 is really good. If you have a lot of ambition and you are more certain of yourself that you can really make money of it. Yeah, I have one on. <laughs> oh, let's see. Hold on. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I see. So you, you're doing jewelry. You're doing uh, lots of stuff. Yeah, right? that's that's like it's really small. I, I don't. I'm gonna take it off. I can show show it to you. Can you see it? Oh, very oh, cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. Very nice. nice. And is it's that, really, is it's that one inch. the square is one inch. So, um, we we design things and then we try to sell it. So, and. Hey. That's one of the things that we do. <laughs> hey, Lev. Yes. Can, can you bring the, the Rayjet uh, site up? Yeah, of course. Uh, just for the, the startup machine so we can yeah. just show people that we do yeah, have an entry level. If you guys want to mention it, the uh, mm -hmm. guys on the panel, uh, for the startup machine. So Trotec owns, well, Ray, Rayjet is our brand. But go, go ahead, guys, If now if you want to kind of discuss it. Yeah, so this is our basic model, actually. Rayjet is made by Trotec, so this is an 18 by 12 uh, process area. And the beauty about this uh, this machine, actually, is using an RF tube. It's not your, your typical entry level that uses glass tube, right? And uh, the software is very close to our speedy model as well. So if you decide to upgrade to a better unit uh, in the future, there's not a lot of learning curve to, uh, to, to be made. Um, uh, but uh, you know, 12, uh, the the Speedy 100 is actually, as far as I'm concerned, is the is a better uh, option for a startup, uh, simply yeah. because the, uh, the the bed size is 12 by 24, and as far as uh, material, uh, when you order almost any material available for laser applications, it's uh, it's 12 by 24, so you don't have to to cut that extra right. six inch on yes. the um, on the bed. So it's maybe it made a be the the good choice. You made a Thanks, yeah, George. if I would advise someone, I would go for Speedy 100. And if you are in a lucky position that you think, okay, I can make enough money, I would go up one size because the bed size is the one thing that we're kind of running into now once in a while. 
especially because when you want more quantities, like we make the the small vases like this. <laughs> one is also one of the vases vases that we make. Uh, it's one of our own designs. Uh, we yeah, and we sell these, but there's only three of these. Uh, all the items of uh, three vases go on one plate. And as, as we sell them to stores as well, it's a lot of plates that have to go in. So, yeah. So, what, what actually, that's a great point. Why did you guys, is it just the bed size? I mean, did yeah. you know about the Rayjet? Did you? Um... The Rayjet was for us, was like, um, I knew that within two or three months, we would outgrow it, especially for the bed size. But also, yeah, the speedy hunter. And we have like really good salesperson here in Holland. <laughs> Do you want to give him a shout out? What, what yeah. Name? Who was it? John Goethart. He's who? Sorry, who? John Goethart. Okay, okay. And cool. yeah, you can pronounce that. <laughs> mm. Okay. But he is, uh, he told us everything and, and showed us everything. And he said, well, if you're going to do do at least the speedy 100 and then it was the 40 watt or the 60 watt and i said to my friend well we need to do the 60 watt because i know and right now i'm like okay a little bit bigger would be nice but mm -hmm. i don't think yeah. we're right we have a year to decide that because we made a deal with them that we could like trade in and um trade in for a bigger bigger model and and why did you go with with Trotec in general, like over other you know brands? I mean, this, obviously this is shameless self promotion here, but <laughs> doesn't matter. I, I mean, we really tr chose Trotec because we thought this is the best option. So we went to all these fairs and we looked at all the all the other companies, mm -hmm. everyone, every single one, all the cheap Chinese companies and the the up upmarket companies that are not Chinese, I don't know where they're from, but they're from other countries. And we looked at all of them and we found two or three that we said, okay, this is maybe an option. And then we went made an or we went to the last fair in March, last year March. And then we stopped at the Trotex stand and we stayed two and a half hours at the fair and at the Trotex stand, so we didn't do anything else. Wow. <laughs> and the guy that Yuri uh, Rillens, he is uh, also a shout out for him. He is uh, really technical and very uh, passionate uh, about what he does. Uh, same goes for John. They're both like they don't own the company; they're just working there. Yeah, I know Yuri. He's, he's great, actually. He's very yeah. Good. They great. they are so uh, how do you say that? So involved in the company, and they're so that it looks like they're selling their own product, and that's <laughs> really something which is really good because that gives me a good feeling. And so we said, okay, what should we do? And then we made an appointment, and I took. I think maybe 20 materials that I wanted to test. I said, okay, can you do this? Can you do this? And he tested everything. We, we stayed a whole day there. And John put everything in the machine and tested it because he didn't know half of the materials. And he said, okay, I'll test them. I'll test them. And everything came out nice. So then we said, okay, this is probably it. We made a little sidestep to another company. But the guy was young. He didn't know so much. Technically, he wasn't very... Yeah, he was okay, but he didn't have the technical knowledge that John and Yuri had. And I really missed that because I really want the technical input. I want to know why something is happening. Why is this lens going this way and that way? And why, if I don't put it on, like, really on focus, why does, do I get a wide line and not a small line? Things like that. I want to know that. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, one thing about Trotec is we're we're such a global uh, presence. I mean, we have subsidiaries in so many countries and distributors in so many countries that uh, you can definitely get a very local uh, feel for for even if it is such a global company. It's not like you know, some of some of the brands I won't mention, but I mean, where you just kind of buy a machine from overseas yeah. and it's very difficult to get any kind of uh, service or, or technical. 
um, technical requests. Um, I, I have this good question from uh, Vimal. Uh, this machine can be used for wood cutting or only laser engraving. If cutting is possible, what is the maximum thickness it would take? Also, what type of wood is preferable? So this is a question I guess is good for James, Mike, uh, Stephen, maybe even. Uh, what, what do you guys want to uh, say to this, uh, to, to Vimal? Yeah, I, 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 I'd like to hear Stephen's take on on this one actually the thickness I mean, the thickness of wood that we can cut is going to be defined by the amount of power on one hand and on the other hand what what uh, edition of our machine you know some of our machines don't have direct uh, air assist so for this application for cutting wood you would definitely want a machine that has direct or coaxial air assist uh, or and preferably a gasket uh, and definitely um, I would say depending on the thickness uh, Mike, you can agree or disagree with me, but for this type of application, I would want a minimum a minimum of 80 watts uh, for, for cutting wood, even if preferably 100 watts. We have a 60, and I cut nine. Mm, yeah. Oh, well. Can you That's hear me, Mike? Yeah, yeah, Mike, Mike, we can hear you. Okay. I mean, I think, is he talking about the Rage Ed, or is he talking about I think the... just in general, tr tr in general. Mm -hmm. I, I think Jamal doesn't It's a difficult have a question to answer, because we don't know what... what thickness that we do yeah, well the quick um, answer to this question is yes you can cut uh, use the laser for cutting wood yeah. uh well yeah. the thickness and type of wood depends on the laser power because as, uh, when you're dealing with wood there's a lot of different factors to consider right how dry or moist the wood is mm. uh the grain pattern actually believe it or not plays a big role uh as, um, as well uh so but we've had a lot of tutorials videos uh, showing people how to minimize the minimize the uh, the burning on the on the wood as well like mike actually made tons of video about wood uh cutting and uh, engraving so maybe we can bring some of the uh, links there on our youtube uh, channel that uh, sure yeah i'm just showing one uh, general yeah. one that we have from austria but if you type in a uh, uh, trotec laser engraving wood uh there's tons and tons of stuff that mike did and then you know lo lo lots of countries did um Go ahead. Vimal, Vimal um, uh, came up with this question um, uh, while while we have the Rayjet one up, and so maybe he was talking about that. And so with the with the Rayjet, yeah, you can you can cut wood. I have I've cut you know the the typical three millimeter Baltic birch with n no problem, nice nice golden brown edges, not a burnt edge, um, and then uh, five millimeter with a little darker edge. Uh, I I wouldn't go beyond that with with a thirty watt tube, um, and with with no direct air assist, as Stephen said. But yeah, you you could definitely cut wood even on our, our entry level offer. Yeah, just remember that the rule of thumb is is uh, ten watts for every millimeter. I mean, if you're in a production environment, so you know on the rayjet, uh, as Jimmy said, uh, three millimeter would be your your mm -hmm. your preferred cut uh, width yeah. or depth or width. But uh, five millimeter, I wouldn't go anymore because if you start to get too thick, then you're going to get flaming, yeah. and then you're going to have issues on the edge quality. So, so certainly uh, three millimeter, um, no more than five, uh, and if you can, you know, the uh, Speedy One Hundred is is better just because of the fact that the air is 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 pointed into the curve. So, you know, so if you are cutting some of the thicker material, then you will extinguish the flame better. So. Yeah, I'm just pulling this up quickly. If you guys uh, type Rayjet webinar into YouTube, uh, we have like an hour long um, a demo and a webinar on the Rayjet and uh, the Rayjet versus the Speedy 100 versus other kind of general hobby lasers. If you guys want to learn more, uh, check out that that webinar. Yeah, I, th I think to remember on the Rayjet is 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 you are going to get a very good quality engraving on it, right? And you're going to have the speed. So, you know, I mean, you know, compared to other glass, some of the glass tube lasers, the price point is, is pretty good. Um, and the quality of the engraving is going to be very, very, very good. And the cut's going to be fast, good. And you can process out of the existing design software, such as Corel or Illustrator. Um, and with the new 11, with the new updated software, um, you're going to have a lot more ability now to locate with the with the with the laser light with the job being put on the the laser desktop and 
and so it's certainly a lot easier to operate now too than than with the previous software. Yeah, and, and JC uh, Productions actually asking, uh, talk about the new Rage at the bigger bed. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I think he's talking about the R five hundred. I don't know if you guys want to just mention that. Uh, I, I can pull up a, a quick video if you guys want to quickly just w w what is it? Discuss it. Mike is our R five hundred guru. <laughs> so yeah, well. I guess I mean the R500 is a glass tube laser with a with a stepper motor driven uh, system. Um, so again, the engraving is it, you know for a glass tube is very very slow. So I mean if you're if you you know I mean you the quality is good, but again it's it's just slow. Um, so again, if you're looking for productivity, then uh, you know certainly uh, the speedy machines would would certainly be better that way. I mean from a cutting standpoint. It's it's relatively fast. Uh, there is a noticeable difference, you know, in the quality of the cut compared to the to the servo based uh, motors on the speedy machine. So um, again, um, I you know what what I've done with a few people is is I've done cuts on both. I know Don did some extensive some testing uh, for Digie, you know, where he was cutting some really you know really fine product, and there was certainly a noticeable difference between what he got on the speedy machine versus what he got on the R500. But, you know, compared to, a, you know, a Chinese type system or uh, or even some of the machines manufactured in the U.S. with glass tube technology, uh, it's 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 comparable. Um, I mean, it's it's around the price of a of a speedy 100. Right. So if you're looking for a large format laser cutter, that's not I mean, when you say slow, it's slow compared to the SP, you know, the Trotec SP 500, right? But I mean, in general, it's a good cutter for yeah. for, for an well, not only that. Like actually, the R 500 is upgradable. You can add a second uh, laser source to it. Oh, right. You can add a yeah, uh, a CO2 laser, and you can use that dedicated for engraving, and you can use that as a yeah. So if you have a hundred watt glass tube, you can actually put another laser head RF tube 60 watt uh, CO2 on it. So now it's like, it works like a flex, right? So you can use that RF tube for engraving so you can speed up the process. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Stefan Durham's asking, did I hear it has a, it is a glass tube? Uh, yes, do you guys want to discuss that as well? Sure. Uh, James, Mike, the, the fact that it has a glass tube. Yeah, sure. It's a, a performance workhorse. It's, um, it's over a hundred watts, and it's uh, it, it cuts beautifully. It's a lovely tube. It's not uh, glass tube. Sometimes has very negative connotations. This is a, a top class, uh, a beautiful glass tube in this machine. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing at all, and um, it's a powerful, a powerful tube. Um, as I say, the more power you have, the better, especially in a wood application. Uh, you can cut uh, wood across the entire spectrum of our power, depending on the thickness. But when you really want to a cutting workhorse, that's what the Rayjet 500 is. The R500 is definitely a, a very good cutting workhorse. Yeah, and uh, JC's production is asking, uh, can you talk a little bit about the new fabric material uh, for the PPE and how can the U.S. have that? So I think uh, the U.S. is actually working on uh, getting it there. I'm not, I, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but you want to talk to your local uh, rep in the States about uh, the Armor Breath. If you want to know more about the Armor Breath, just Google the Armor Breath, like the Armor Breath brand, and you'll see our uh, manufacturer's uh, website. Um, there's a lot of good stuff about the Armor Breath. It's mostly, um, it's it, it's a synthetic fabric uh, that protects 90% of particles, uh, where cotton masks would protect 50 to 70%. And of course, the N95 medical masks would pretend, protect 95%. So it's very, very good fabric for uh, for that. Uh, but actually, speaking of PPE, uh, Vivian, if, if you want to kind of let us know I mean, how did COVID uh, kind of affect you guys uh, and, and your business? Uh, speaking of PPE, do you guys even do any kind of PPE production on, on the Speedy 100? Um, we did some, but not a lot. Um, as our company is still very small, um, we, well, as soon as we had the semi-intelligent lockdown that they call it here, um, still dropped to almost zero. It was really strange because we thought, well, now everyone's going online and ordering things, but they were only ordering things they needed. 
things for the kids to play with and things and we have some but we don't have so much and we're not very uh we, we didn't market that so much so um then we we did put some fabric in and we cut some uh, ma mask pieces for someone to sew and that worked but we didn't do a lot about uh, with it um there was also i tried asking is there a demand for something here is uh please let us know but nobody said but then we discovered all our the companies that are very close to us locally they um they we made a sign like we have shops that are very close they're like walking distance from our house and there's like five or six shops in a row and they're very small businesses so we made a sign and we just donated that to them um they're also on our instagram uh, somewhere it's it's like with two dolls that are holding hands uh, or, or yeah two dolls and they're keeping their distance it's on the laser babes okay <laughs> I'll, I'll try to find it there's a lot but okay yeah um it's in march somewhere uh, let me see uh i think it should be up more up and, uh, Vivian, you actually, uh, I think you wanted to ask uh, the panel some questions about the lasers. I mean, we can open up job control. We can open up uh, Corel. Or, or, by the way, are you using Corel or, or Illustrator? Uh, Illustrator. You're using Illustrator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I can bring up Illustrator. I'm not uh, an expert, but uh, we can see, we can try to help you out with it. I have like not so many like technical questions about the program, but more, uh, I'm going to close the window for a second because they're going to turn on the Party, so no, no problem at all. Maybe until it's her, it's her son's birthday, so it's uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a big party happening. Eight, it's, uh, 18th. <laughs> it's a COVID 18th. party. So it's only uh, oh, it's a COVID party. <laughs> um, no, the, the, I don't have like uh, illustrator questions because I always look them up. But I have a question about the material. Um, Trotrek has really nice eco rubber. And it's for the making the stamps, and it's green. And we really like that. And then we put it in the machine, and the smell is so horrible. <laughs> and the machine is in my house. My kids were complaining, and everyone was complaining. What did you cook? So what went wrong? <laughs> and we were wondering, is there anything we can do about that? Because we, we're using a opponent's uh, eco rubber, but... We kind of want to use Trotex stuff, but it's the smell is really, really not. Yeah, you cannot do anything with it. Hans is high, by the way, but uh, I don't know. You guys want to answer this one, Mike, James, uh, Mel? I mean, well, you can number first. You can improve the uh, the exhaust system. Um, we have the, so, yeah. She has yeah. an, an Atmos, yeah. An Atmos, okay. I mean, the pressure has to be all, all the way up. And to be quite honest, there's no ways around the smell of uh, rubber. Uh, I have a customer that usually have a, uh, a Febreze beside the machine. <laughs> Before they open the lid, they just spray them. <laughs> and that's a true story. That's what they usually do. Yeah. That stuff works. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, really, I'm not considered a pre-filter. Yeah, no, we filter. We filter with is what's, uh, what they call um, additive dosing. It's a sticky product that, uh, if you speak to uh, Trotec, it's a, I think it's a VA5 or VA6 um, pre filter that you can get. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. VA5 or VA6, I'm not too sure. But even the stamp, because mm -hmm. we send it to the company for two people. Even the stamp smells so horrible that we can't even sell it to customers because they'll just grab it from the package and it smells like it's really hor horrible. I mean, mm -hmm. every rubber smells, but it smells like a little bit chemical. That's the smell of money, Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do have a low odor rubber. Yeah, yeah we, we do. do. <laughs> it's it's not. It's I don't know if it's the eco rubber, but we do have a low low odor. Um, yeah, we the the that that works, but that's not eco, and that's yeah, the thing here they that's really what you're going for. Yeah, yeah. So that's we have it. green, uh, the green stamp, so that look really nice. Okay. Well, it's actually, uh, I mean, can you guys, uh, somebody, tell us the the history of Trotec? I mean, it, it came from 
from rubber stamps. I mean, why, uh, if you, anybody wants to talk about the impact technology, kind of tell people why it's there and it's because of the, the rubber engraving. Go ahead, Mel. Oh, James, go ahead, James. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, what was it 112 years ago, I, I guess, uh, in, in Austria? Uh, <laughs> Mike was there uh, at the, uh, the grand Mike, opening. Mike, Mike was at the grand opening. We, we got to take a shot every time we, we talk about it. We do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> and um, from from there, I mean, they, they became the, the world's leading stamp manufacturer, um, inventing all the cool technology in stamps that we know to today. Um, and then in the 90s, they needed a way to produce stamps digitally. And so um, they sent far and wide for a, a way to do this and, and ended up with the speedy machine because, I mean, classically, uh, rubber is a is an enemy to uh, motion systems. Um, and so the, the rubber dust, uh, you know, in their first models would be would decimate the motion system of, of the machine. And so they invented the Speedy with impact technology, which allowed them to produce rubber stamps, you know, three shifts a day and still have the laser be running like the day it was made. And so they, they said, well, if it does this rubber stamp stuff, well, it probably will protect against all the other materials as well, since stamps are, are so terrible to make with, with <laughs> lasers. So, uh, from then on, man, speedies were the thing to make rubber stamps with. And then uh, slowly o over time, um, we're doing absolutely everything with the laser. So uh, that's the short history. Cool. Actually, uh, we're going to drop it our museum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the curator. Yeah, the I can curator tell, I, the museum. Yeah. I can tell you that I actually was involved in Tro when Trodat bought their first laser machine from another supplier before they started making their own machines, and no. that machine didn't stand up. Um, and no, I don't think your case, Mike, Mike. with uh, with the whole age thing. Because he, yeah, well, <laughs> he yeah, I mean that was that was interesting because that's exactly what ended up happening was they they purchased the machine from us. We went and did the install. It was a hundred watt machine, and it wouldn't stand up to the rubber dust. Um, so, um, that was from a North American, uh, supplier and, and, uh, and that's ultimately why, you know, Cho, Chodat, you know, um, put together Cho Tech because they couldn't get a machine, uh, built by somebody else. So they ended up having to build their own machines and, and ultimately it was a, a dust issue. And as we know, dust is not, is, is not your, is, is your enemy of your laser machine. Right. The more we can get dust out of the machine and everything, the better it's going to be for the life of the machine. Um, so Chotec's taken a lot of, of you know, a lot of um, extra steps to make sure that that dust is is minimized as much as they can 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 do inside the physical machine. Okay. The so I was there. I was there. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. He cut the ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the guy it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't stone dust from the chisel. It wasn't what it was. <laughs> we do have a lot of add-ons equipment to, to for uh, stamp making, right? We got the Laserati, and then we have the uh, color jet. So uh, maybe one time we should have a, an episode about that, so we can teach people like there's more to laser. Um, I mean, stamp making than. Than what you see here, right? Yeah, the, the guy you're seeing on, on screen here is Jason. He's our uh, Trodat marketing manager. And uh, we did a couple of these videos uh, showing how to properly engrave rubber. And uh, they also sell uh, Delrin seals. So for, for any lawyers, uh, you know, if you're selling to, to law firms uh, and they're doing the, the seals on the paper, uh, you can engrave that as well. Uh, Vivian, do you have uh, more questions for our yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, when you use the job control and you use the stamp function and then you can choose the, the DPI and everything, um, but then there's also a function that says uh, cut optimized. And that's really good for the stamps because you don't want any extra rubber on the side because then the ink will get on, you get smudges, etc. But when we use that, it cuts so narrow to the edge that it cuts off like the very outer edge of the stamp, 
And sometimes it's not a problem because then it's okay. But sometimes it just cuts off a part of the letter or a part of something else. And that's a problem. So is there anything that they're going to do with the new software to fix that? Because we yeah, make our own edges. Optimizations already. Uh, I'm not sure if that's in there, but there's a, the, there was a, a request for the uh, multiples function to have a an option to add some white space around each entity. And okay. I think that might tie in. It's, it's worth a check to see if they've optimized that. But in the meantime, I mean, what lens are you using? What? Because that makes the, the lens you use makes uh, makes a difference as well. When what, what, what lens what lens size are you uh, using? Uh, uh, 1.5 millimeter. Okay, so that's as narrow as it gets on mm -hmm. this. Yeah. 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 It's worth a look. It's worth a look to see if that ties in because I know the latest uh, version, they did improve on the multiples function because we okay. used to have multiples which was right up against each other and no option to add any space. Now you can add that in there. Well, there is, there is space in there now, but maybe they hide that in. It's worth a look. Yeah, okay. That's, that's... version 11.3. Do you know which version you're you're using of job control, Vivian? I have no clue, and it's not on this computer, so I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it just just three is the one you need to look out for. Okay, and that's the latest. That's the latest. Eleven point three. Yeah. When did, did that come out? Just um, like yeah, yeah, it came, came out, ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I d we didn't upgrade yet, so we need to do that. Th yeah, that, contact that, contact your guy in, in in Holland for sure. Yeah. I, I didn't know there. I thought there was going to be like a web-based software. I thought that was the next step. That is coming. Um, it's uh, we're basically that's supposed to be coming at the end of the year, which is going to be a web-based uh, software like like Job Control. We we did have a, a webinar for Trotec customers where they could kind of test out. Uh, the, it's already built. They're just kind of uh, making sure that um, you know they're, they're getting rid of any kind of issues. But there is. There are supposed to be hopefully some kind of a soft launch at the end of the year now, ho hopefully. So anybody with a Mac, I know this has been going on for, you know, since I started at Trotec, people are asking when are we going to get a Mac uh, server for uh, Trotec. So hopefully that's going to solve the, the that issue as well. Would be very nice because the machine or the, the, I don't know, the, the, the HP machine that we have there is very old. Mm -hmm. and we because we're not using it just to send things to the laser. That's the only thing. We're yeah, and then, and then you can use it from any computer once yeah, it's web-based. Yeah, so hopefully that, that's coming out. Uh, any, uh, any more questions? These are, these are great. Keep, keep them coming. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that, oh, no, there's one more uh, job control question. Um, I asked this already in a, in a webinar before, but I, I didn't, wasn't sure if you got totally what I meant. Um, if you put a, a design in job control, you can flip it over like one time, 45 degrees, and it goes uh, clockwise, counterclockwise. Um, but sometimes you want to go one more further because the grain of your wood is like this and you kind of want to do that. And of, or the space on your wood is like, oh, it could just fit in here if like the long end goes in there and then the rest and you use less space. Why is it so difficult to make something that could just rotate the whole thing around for it doesn't have to be like every degree, but every 45 degrees every time? We hear you. We hear you. <laughs> I hope the, the Austrians hear you too. The Austrians are, uh, <laughs> do they know that? <laughs> oh, it's really like, annoying. I really have to like, go back in the software and then say, it's, okay, I need it standing up and then it's going flat anyway. I don't know why, but uh, it's going flat. And then I can turn it, and then it's in the right position. But I always, I keep forgetting, thinking about it before I do it. No, that's a, that's a great point. And like uh, Bianca said in our webinar yesterday, she called it the mothership, the Austrian mothership. If you're listening, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you have any other questions like that, Vivian, uh, definitely this is the time to to say it because uh, any kind of requests. Um, that you think, oh, go ahead, James. I have a question for you, actually, Vivian, because um, I, a lot of my customers are are asking this question, and, and it's a great one, is how do you price a job? We get that all the time, actually. How yeah. do you cost out? How do you cost out? <laughs> Pardon me? Um, what, 
Well, I'm on Facebook in this group, and it's called uh, the Original Dude with the Laser. You might know it. It's really it Mike. Are you talking about Mike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm a dude, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. yeah, but um, it's it's a really great group. There's people with all kinds of machines and. Um, yeah, so a lot of questions go there also. How much do you price it? And I see that in the States you can ask way much more than here. The pricing here is a lot less. I mean, I can see uh, sometimes I see a sign or something and it, it's only, yeah, this is the one. Mm -hmm. And it's a really a good group because they, there's a lot of people with a lot of knowledge. And um, for instance, I made a uh glass uh oven uh tray and i engraved it on the bottom but upside down so i uh flipped the image uh, mirror wise and then put it on and uh, i said oh look what i made i just gave myself a shout out and then everyone was over me like oh, you cannot do that and it will burst in your oven and everything like that and i thought okay I'm not going to do that. I have a very old oven. I really want a new one. So I thought, I'll try. <laughs> so, a Dutch oven? <laughs> uh, I, I, I think we forgot to ask Vivian, what's the weirdest thing you've engraved? Oh, like, that's, right. that, that's a standard yeah, question. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's a very difficult one. We were thinking about it. My colleague and we said, we haven't engraved any weird things. Well, what mean, about what's the weirdest thing you've seen engraved ever? Oh, well, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> That's probably what Mike said a couple we, of times. We've seen now. that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, seen. <laughs> no. Um, uh, the, the most favorite thing I've engraved is the three, 3D engraving. engraving. And, uh, wow. Like, I, I want to kind of want to show you some pictures because it's, it's of the Trotec Awards that we won the prize with because mm -hmm. we, we came out first. Two is it on? Is it on your website or just your your Instagram? No, it, it's on my uh, computer, so I need to. Oh, uh, okay. Like, uh, I and I, I also, Vivian, j just before we we go from uh, to other questions, uh, the are, are you ever on this group, uh, the Trotec Laser Users Official Group, by any chance? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, you should you should check it out because it's uh yeah, it's by it's by Trotec users for and it's a closed group. You can only be part of it if you're uh, if you you have a Trotec and they share a lot of stuff uh, and insights uh, for Trotec. Okay. So I I definitely recommend any anybody who's watching who has a Trotec who hasn't checked that out. It's called Trotec Laser Users Official. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if you have to send them your serial number, but it's it's just just for Trotec uh, okay. people. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. We should make our own lab. Dudes, dudes with Trotec, right? Dudes with Trotec. In their van. In their van. In their van. I'll be the guest then. Uh, we actually, I, I want to just bring up, uh, we have about 10 minutes to go, so I want to bring up some uh, priority questions uh, from, from the audience. Uh, Gail from Sherwood Park uh, in Alberta. Uh, the difference in lenses and their applications, I mean, it's a very broad uh, question, and, I, you know, who I, I don't know who wants to kind of, start the conversation about lenses. I, I know some, some customers didn't even know what clearance lenses were and, you know, and clearance lenses. <laughs> who, who wants to start this one? Well, maybe, maybe what you need to first understand is what a lens does, right? I think that's probably the first thing, you know, because a lot of people don't understand typically what a lens does. And a lens basically takes a, you know, a wider beam and then makes it into a nice point. And, and at the end of the point is where we, which is the smallest spot size, is where we want to be when we hit the material. The question then becomes, how long is it in focus as as before it starts to diverge back out again? So, lens goes like this, and then a lens, then your your depth of field is here, just like a camera, and then basically it starts to go back out again like this. So a simple way is cone straight inverted cone. So what the lens, what a, every lens does for you, yeah, there we go. What every lens does for you is gives you a certain depth of field. So, um, you know, a one and a half inch lens is going to give you a, a, a small depth of field, but, a, uh, but the point, 
the spot size is smaller. And then if we go to a two inch lens, then it, the, the depth of field becomes a little bit bigger, but the spot size becomes a little bit bigger. Uh, two and a half, the depth of field becomes, you know, uh, bigger, but the spot size becomes bigger. So when you're looking to do really, really fine engraving, normally you want the smallest spot size you can get away with, which is a one and a half inch lens. Um, but your your the trade off is the thickness of the material that you can cut through, or the maybe the material has a bit of a curve on it, maybe it warps up a little bit. Um, so again, normally the two inch lens is the most common lens we sell, and as I tell people, there's uh, eighty percent of the people out there probably use nothing more than a two inch lens because ultimately the two inch lens is good for everything they do. Um, but again, if you're cutting, you know, I've had people that are that that need a really, really small kerf. You know, I one guy I always tell the story of a guy that was cutting model buildings and he wanted the the he was cutting out window frames and he wanted the window frames. Get this to slide in the in in the actual model so you could actually open up the window frame in the models it was really cool oh. but he needed something really small and the two inch lens he couldn't do it but the one and a half inch lens you could get away with um you know maybe use the one and a half inch lens you know if you're cutting paper and you want you try to have the cleanest cut you can get away with if you're cutting thick material so if you have a 120 watt laser and you want to cut three eighths or half inch material then you've got to go to a two and a half inch lens so again, it just really depends on on the material. So um, again, you know, I can see Lev throwing up some examples on on the on the screen. So yeah, anybody else want to add in? There, Go there's ahead. There's videos. Uh, there's videos. If you type in Trotec lenses, there's a couple of instructional videos uh, our guys in Austria made uh, about the difference of engraving. But uh, yeah, Stephen, do, do you have any anything to add uh, for, for lenses? Any applications or advice you, you want to give to people? It's like Mike, Mike uh, covered that pretty well. It just all depends on the application. As long as you know there's always going to be a trade-off in one direction or the other, and that the two-inch in our market is your vanilla lens uh, that, that, that works for most applications. Um, yeah, I think Mike covered it, uh, everything I would. I don't want to get too technical. You know, they, can, you guys, uh, can you guys talk about the, the clearance lens? Uh, what, yeah. what those yeah. do? Well, the four-inch lens actually one of the biggest benefit of having a longer focal distance, uh, like a four-inch lens, is you're, uh, a, you're a bit far away from your material. So if you're engraving any concave or convex uh, uh, type of surface, that's the perfect uh, uh, lens to, to use. So the way, the way I usually explain it to customers is the bigger the lens or the higher the number is like having a longer knife for cutting, right? Okay. So. Yeah, small lens, small knife, and yeah. Yeah, just remember that, you know, I mean, if you if you do go to the four inch lens that you you have to be four inches away from the material. So now what you lose is the depth of your bed, yeah. right? And this is always, yes. you know, critical to Close remember. To give or take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So again, the nice thing about a clearance lens is that um, you, you, you are still, you can be closer, but you now have the clearance to be able to 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 do some of those, uh, and you don't lose that 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 your depth of your bed, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then a, a one point five inch lens is going to be fantastic for like your thousand DPI photographs in anodized aluminum or, you know, uh, fine materials like like that. Um, if you're doing you know stuff in in wood, I mean, don't don't bother with the 1.5 inch lens. It's not gonna make a, a difference between the two, but definitely in, in anodized aluminum, I see a huge difference uh, between the 1,000 uh, thousand DPI uh, and a two inch lens with a 1,000 DPI. Yeah. Yeah, again, you know, again, it's all, and you gotta make sure your power is perfect too, but uh, just remember that uh, there is overlap with your, with the beam. Um, so again, uh, if you want more lines, then as Jimmy said, you've got to go to a smaller lens because you need a smaller spot size. Mm -hmm. So, Vivian, did you, did you end up uh, finding the picture? Uh, yeah, I sent it to you in, by email. Oh, okay. I'll I'll, I'll just bring it up in a, in a second. Uh, I'm just going to go to one more uh, question. Uh, we had this for for a while. I just never got to it from John in St. Catharines, Ontario. This is a pretty long question, so I'm just going to read it out. Uh, due to some very unique parameters on job uh, on a job that I'm doing, 
I actually need to slow down the jogging during the actual job of my 400 flex right now. Uh, it's moving so fast. It causes shifting on the bed due to the material properties I'm working with. And there is no hold down method possible. I think it's three or four G. I need like half G or even less. Where in job control can I do this? I can't seem to find the option. Um, there is a max speed in job control, but I can't get access to it. Assuming it's tech, it's for techs only. Uh, moving too fast between cuts. I mean, it's a very technical question, uh, Stephen. Do you think uh, you, you think you kind of? Ex I think you were explaining it to me before. It's like when when the the head jumps between cuts, right? It, that's going yeah. to. In traditional CNC or plateau environments, it used to be called pin up speed. So it was or traversing speed. or traversing speed or traversing speed. Now yeah. the, the 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 acceleration can be manipulated uh, in job control, but uh, like the, the the question says, it's it's actually a, a menu section. It's ac accessible to technicians, not to end users. So we're not um, uh, happy with uh, the end user actually manipulating this. But if it's going to be a, a critical application for the end user, then you need to reach out to us and we can advise you further. But the, the acceleration can be manipulated. However, the acceleration between cuts is not fine grained on the Trotec. So it's going to affect the acceleration uh, across the board. So there's going to be some adjustments to your settings. The, the, the fine grained pen up speed or traverse speed is not, you can't manipulate that hands on, but the acceleration can be manipulated. Yeah, well, this, I'm assuming this is John Canton, so yep. he's very technical and he used to work for a troll tech. I'm pretty sure he can handle it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I, I might do uh, with the um, with the the traverses, if if it's possible, um, using the different colors uh, and on say your your red, then bring a blue a blue line from that position to where you want to go. Uh, and then just have it as slow and at zero power, so your traverse is a lot shorter between where you where you ended your last object and where you're beginning your your next object. So that way, it's not traversing; it's actually doing a vector cut at whatever speed you want, but at zero yeah. power. That's a good so, point. Yeah. There's a, and what that's you a could do too, yeah. What you could do is you could change your 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 home node, uh, which is your end node, um, on each object, so that the the home node. Uh, and the end node of each uh, each object are very close to each other. So you mm -hmm. can use the color, but you can also change the the starting point of where that node starts and yeah. ends, which then instead of it maybe going over here and then going up up whoops up to there, then mm -hmm. maybe you know you can change it so that it's closer. And again, like Jimmy said, you can use colors too to do that. Uh, I'll just inject one thing too, which is something that they added in which was always a bit of a bugaboo for me for years and years and years uh, with rotary attachments is, um, is the big problem is uh, when you're done the rotary job, uh, the machine wants to race back and it wants to spin that glass really fast. Um, and what Trotec has done is they've actually allowed you to, to adjust that that speed that the that the head will move back to the so starting it fall, uh, yeah because what will happen a lot of times is things will will slip or shit. things will fall off and everything like that so in the in the rotary attachment you do have the ability now to actually adjust that speed so that it doesn't want to race back um and trust me um every rotary attachment i've ever worked on had that problem so this is to me was a was a nice feature that they did put in, mm. in there and i think that's probably people like you know vivian uh getting on these laser webinars complaining about the fact that it did do that so that's good that you're you're doing that because they'll listen to you so <laughs> that's right. but it was good it, 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 and again that goes back to john's question that, that they have done it for the rotary and and maybe if enough people ask then maybe they'll do it so that they can slow down between objects too so, okay. you know. Well, Vivian, you, sorry, you wanted to add something? Yeah, is that in the software where you can? Uh, yeah, it's in, in the options where you set the diameter for the, uh, for the, uh, for, for your, for your, for your glass or your bottle or whatever you're Options, accessories, and then. Um, rotary. 
We'll yeah, I, I just wanted to bring up what, what Vivian was talking hey, about. The, nice. the, the winning. So this is the 3D engraving. Uh, and I guess you, you did an inlay acrylic into wood. And then this looks like Trolley's metallics yeah. uh, thins on top. Thins, right. Very cool. Yeah. How long did it take you to design and, and make this? Um, well, I don't know. The, the flower was the difficult bit. Because I wanted it really deep. And... So that took me a couple of hours to YouTube, and then I found your YouTube. I didn't know that it existed. So then I found the one with the balloon. That's uh, Trotec, uh, I think even Trotec Canada made that. Um, and that was really nice. And then I had to find a, a picture that was already ready, because I didn't know how to work with Illustrator at the time. So I really had to take the teacher. So I found a picture online. and. That was good enough because it worked. Uh, did, did you see that uh, 3D engraving webinar that we did uh, with Renee from Calgary? So he he suggested there's a there's a great software called Vectric from Aspire, uh, and they can actually it's not a, that expensive. Uh, it's definitely not as expensive as the old 3D software as like uh, ArtCam used to be, but uh it's you can have there's like tons and tons of ready-made 3d objects that are it's mo it, the, the software is built for cnc but you can use it for 3d engraving with uh, with a laser so it's called vectric uh aspire from vectric or vectric from aspire one or the other uh, yeah just just before we go uh just a quick question uh you know i, I had about finding clients uh vivian where where do you find clients in, in your business do you uh, how much promotion or out uh, outbound uh, marketing or sales do you do versus you know, building products and waiting for people to come in like or the inbound stuff? Uh, well, we we need to do more. <laughs> That's one thing. Um, I'm going to go to a seminar uh, next week, I think. To uh, they, they're going to look through the website and see where we can get more Google reviews or Google views or whatever. I have no clue how it works. <laughs> we do a lot through Instagram. We get a lot of questions through Instagram through the the chat mode. Oh, can you also do this and can you do that? And then, but that's a lot of like one on one uh, things and a lot of items that are just unique items, one only. Okay. But, Actually, that has been yeah, Vivian, just to answer that question about the burn mark before we sign off, because that's yeah. that comes up a lot. So, uh, Vivian, sorry, the question is, how do you remove the the, uh, the burn marks from the rose when you you did that three D engraving on the rose? Uh, I just washed it with vinegar. Oh, Can really? You, wow. I just and well, I just brushed it. Uh, really uh, hard, but there was not so much on it because I did it with the uh, three D the, the layers. I think it was. Yeah, and yeah. The, uh, yeah, is it the layer or the the relief the relief mode? I think the relief mode. Yeah, the relief mode. It. And did you yeah. did you do a one pass or multiple passes on that engraving? I think it was three paths or maybe five i'm not sure oh wow okay it, it's in it's in the file with uh, what we had to hand in better hand in all the settings and everything but i am not sure i think three or five yeah, yeah so yeah the, the multiple passes on that 3d is 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 what saves a lot of times a lot of the cleaning that has to be done so, yeah and I, I also think that maybe i put the last pass i uh, said and do it lightly yeah so it didn't burn that much yeah but yeah, you should you should maybe change your name to Laser Bears. Not Laser Bears. <laughs> <laughs> right? After that, uh, after that, after that nice uh, piece. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, guys, I think we'll end it there. We're, we're eight minutes over, but um, I, I just wanted to say a big thanks to, to Vivian from Laser Babes. Uh, check out our website, uh, laserbabes.nl. Uh, look, at, look at our Instagram or Ozio uh, on, Instagram, on Instagram as well, excuse me. Um, honestly, very big thank you from, from, from you, and we'll have uh, more customers. Oh, sorry, Mike has a question. I just want to say that this, this I like this webinar thing because I get to meet all these really creative, yes. very beautiful people, yeah, and, really. and you're just along with all the other people that have been on here that do some really beautiful stuff and make selling lasers a lot easier because people look mm -hmm. at at your talent and then they and they they want to they want to get in, they get inspired by you. 
Yeah. So, Thank yeah. you so yeah. very totally. much for having me. I thought it was really scary, but okay, <laughs> we made it. <laughs> exactly, guys. Uh, Trotek is around the world. It's not that scary. Just come on and chat. We don't us bite. Can us Canadians are very nice people. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. So Thank next, you. Uh, yeah, next week we have uh, Dormy workshops. Todd Bishop from uh, Dormy out in Halifax. They do these amazing uh, leather cut golf covers. So we're going to talk to him. Uh, stay tuned for next week. Uh, next Wednesday, next week Wednesday, we have the one-hour design challenge. It is on a Rayjet, but if you could do it on a Rayjet, you could do it on any Trotec machine. Uh, so we have that every Wednesdays. And then we're going to try and do every month to have a consumables uh, webinar. We had one yesterday um, where we talk only about consumables or a specific group of consumables like trolleys or, or acrylics and so on. Uh, so stay tuned. And uh, thank you very much, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.